Now, three times Padre Pio saw or predicted the future. We're going to look at three of these occasions. So please do stay with us. Hello, friends of Following Padre Pio. I am Edward Urban, and on this channel, Following Padre Pio, we take a glimpse into the incredible life of Padre Pio, the Capuchin monk, mystic, and miracle worker. So please do stay tuned to this channel and we hope that you will be amazed to find out what Padre Pio can do for you, what his intercession can do for you or for someone you love. And please do help us in our Padre Pio apostolate by liking our videos, sharing them with your colleagues and friends or someone you may need know who needs Padre Pio's intercession and if you're new to our channel then make sure that you have subscribed to our channel. Once you've subscribed you must click that reminder bell too. Our story takes place in Italy in St. Giovanni Rotundo and some young ladies were participating in a congress for a Franciscan youth and there they met many young people and they quickly made some good friends. I don't know if you've ever been to one of these religious congresses, but it is a good place to meet like-minded people. We are, of course, social creatures, and so we do need to meet other people, and it's good to have people of like mind. They met there a lady from Trieste who really wanted to hear more about Padre Pio. She was really keen and enthusiastic which is great, of course. And as soon as she could, she approached the organizers of the event and wanted to get other news of Padre Pio, everything that she could. She's so enthusiastic and what a better source to find out about Padre Pio than to go to this Congress, ask the people who, who are there, who are present, who've met Padre Pio. And I guess that is how the Holy Spirit works. He inspires us, our hearts, and we just have to cooperate with him. She confided to them that I never confess if people around the confessional can hear my sins, if they can hear one's sins. And of course, that's a very important thing because confession involves very private matters. We don't want someone else listening in or poss the possibility of hearing us. So in fact, it is between us or me or you and God, that is it. And the priest is merely there in persona Christi, acting on behalf of Christ. And another interesting thing they have with confession is the seal of the confessional. If the priest or someone breaks the seal of confessional, i.e. divulges some sins or something they've learned in the confessional to other people, then it is a major, major sin. And it can be broken under no circumstances. Now, when this Congress was over, I wanted, or this is what the lady tells us, to get the contact details of all these other young people who approached the saint with so much happiness. So how lovely is that? This happiness and inspiration within this whole congregation, it is contagious. It catches on and that's really what it gets a movement for God going. It's an important part of it. All the ladies went back thereafter after the Congress was complete to their, to their hometowns and wherever they had come from. And then something interesting happened a few days later. A letter arrived at Gifra, that is the Franciscan youth head in, in San Giovanni Rotundo. And this letter was requesting urgent prayers because of the health condition of someone who had attended this conference, a very serious problem of the aorta, but it's a blood vessel, one of the big blood vessels near the heart. She's asking for prayers. And then one lady, Nanin, um, one of the younger ladies, she went to the monastery to speak to Padre Pio about this. So how amazing is that you can get in direct contact with the saint right there and then. Padre Pio read this, he listened to it, and then with a harsh and severe tone, he said, Tell her that she came to me to have her body cured and not her soul. Wow, how did Padre Pio even know who this person was from the whole Congress, from the thousands of people he met, but he seemed to have some insight now. And she'd come there with the wrong motive, not to have the soul cured, just the body cured. She wasn't really interested in the rest. 
And then he continued, let her put on, let her put to one side all the magazines that she has sitting in her house and instead read the lives of the saints. She must pray the rosary every day because she still has time to save her soul. This was Padre Pio's message to her. And then listen to this part. He finished with, she has one month left to live. That is all. Imagine that, being told that, I have one month left to live. What am I going to do? Padre Pio's advice, if you have one month left to live, put your magazines aside and all of those things that are going to be of no use to you and get praying the rosary and start reading about the lives of the saints, inspirational lives of the saints. And this message from Padre Pio was passed on faithfully to the lady. Then what happened is some weeks later, her husband, the husband of this lady, arrived at San Giovanni Rotondo and he had come to thank Padre Pio personally for his interve intervention because his wife had now passed away. So Padre Pio got it 100% right. He knew within a month she was going to be dead. And Padre Pio's response, he hugged him, he hugged the husband and he replied, and it was just in time too. What a story is that? Gives me chills down the spine to hear things like this. Our second story is about a Teresa Venezi um, who was visiting Padre Pio, and this is in the year 1954, and now she had this problem, this dilemma. She was seeking discernment, which way should her life go, this way or this way, to get married or to the religious vacation, or should she remain single and free? A big choice that all of us have faced or will face. She went to Padre Pio asking for his advice on this. Now, her brother was in fact studying to become a priest. There was the possibility that he might need help, but we couldn't be sure. You can see it's an important decision for her to make. She asked the saint, Padre Pio, what should she do? Which of these three choices, these three routes for her life, should she be looking at or at following? Padre Pio immediately replied, stay, stay, he will need your help. Wow, how did he even know that? But he was without hesitation, without doubt about this. So she kind of objected. But what if he does not become a priest? What then? Teresa asked. And Padre Pio affirmed, I say that he will. It will remain exactly like this. And then her question was actually very reasonable if you look at it in a certain way because it was still going to be another six years before her brother would be ordained to the priesthood. A lot of time for things to change and to go wrong. She wants to be sure about it now. So we have to ask this question, where or by what authority did he know with such certainty that this was going to happen? Anyway, let's see if it does happen. And her brother, Domenico Venezi, was in fact ordained a priest. And that was on the 28th of August in 1960. And he had obtained a degree in theology. So that's one of the things to becoming a priest at it's quite a prestigious university, the Lateran University in Rome. After that, for several years, he was the pastor at Gen Genzano da Luciana, and he was also the spiritual director at the seminary of Potenza. Oh, he obviously had a lot of potential, a lot of ability. And Teresa remained by her brother's side, helping him in whatever way she could. And she also consecrated her life to the kingdom of God. And here is our third story. Someone called Luciano Livellara had to return to Milan for business reasons. So he had been at St. Giovanni Rotondo just for a short stay there. And then he went to say goodbye to Padre Pio before he left. And he asked Padre Pio for Padre Pio's blessing. Would he give him his blessing before he goes for a safe trip and all of that? And so Padre Pio spoke to him very earnestly, very seriously. And he made this strange comment. He said, travel slowly. Luciano replied, well, Father, I don't usually race. I'm not in a rush. Go slowly and with care. I tell you, the saint affirmed. You repeated it twice. It's kind of sounding a bit ominous as if something might happen. 
Well, this person was a spiritual son of Padre Pio and he set out on the journey. We can see the advantage of being a spiritual child of Padre Pio. He really wants to take care of the, his spiritual children. Luciano set out on his journey driving with great care now. And then he, when he reached the town of Ancona, so that's a port city that's on the east of Italy, about halfway up. And um, there he stopped to get a bite to eat. An interesting little aside about Ancona is that it is where St. Francis of Assisi, he, he boarded a boat and he set out towards the Holy Land in order to attempt to convert the Sultan. Luciano, he had a bite to eat and now he was just continuing with his story, driving slowly, very carefully. And he was going through a residential area, apparently no faster than about 30 kilometers an hour, which is a little faster than running pace, but not much. When something happened, a young boy ran out through an open gate and directly onto the road in front of Luciano's car. And he hit the brakes hard. His car swerved across the road and he missed the boy just by a few centimeters. So wow, what if Padre Pio hadn't told him this and hadn't emphasized, be very careful, then this young child may no longer have been alive. And of course, the way I look at it is, how could Padre Pio have known anything about any of these three circumstances, how they were actually going to work out? But he seemed absolutely certain, and it did. There's no explanation for this. And so now we hope that you have found these three in stor stories of Padre Pio to be quite inspiring. That he could somehow know the future. Obviously there's God telling him about the future. He just tell, says what he has told. But we hope that you find these inspiring and that you will bring your prayers and your intentions to Padre Pio. Now, a good way of doing this is to enroll your Mass Pre Intentions. You can just do that on our website. We have a Mass every Friday dedicated to Padre Pio's intentions, bringing your intentions to Padre Pio. Just go into our website. You can upload your intentions there. And if you've already done this in the past, just you can do it again. It will just update on the system what your new intentions are, and you won't have to run through part of that process either. Please do keep us in your prayers too.